recently I've been going through a bunch of old pictures because I'm trying to uh, up my game on my social media platforms with my Instagrams and my Facebooks and my uh, tweeters. So uh, I've, I've started uploading a bunch of pictures to those social media sites. So go on over, visit them and do the likes and the subscribes or whatever it is you do on those platforms. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I ran across uh, some pictures of the pin bot that I did a custom paint job on. And I thought, you know what, maybe I'll make a, a little video on this. I, I have a bunch of pictures. I don't have very much video from this time because this was before I was uh, doing YouTube video kind of things. So this video is going to be more of a podcast with pictures, <laughs> something like that. Anyway. All right, let's go over this. So maybe we should back up first real quickly and talk about the first machine that I did a custom paint job on. My friend Don owned a pinball company in the Vancouver area. And, well, he still does pinball stuff, but he's not with the company anymore. Uh, long story. Anyway, the company was going to host or sponsor a competition at the Northwest Pinball Arcade Show that was coming up. And then they were going to give away a pinball machine as a prize. So Don had this Globetrotters machine, but it needed a bit of work and the paint job on it was pretty thrashed. He contacted me and said, Hey, I've got this thing going on. Do you want to help me do the paint job on this? Now, Don has a lot of experience doing the mechanics of pinballs and the electronics of it, but he hadn't ever, as far as I know, he hadn't ever painted and in use stencils on a pinball machine or an arcade machine. Now I hadn't either, but I had some experience with painting and some stencil work and some other things. So we figured the two of us could, um, kind of figure it out as we went along. <laughs> so we got this, uh, old cabinet at head end. Don had stripped all the parts out of it and we sanded it down and then we did some wood fill on it and cleaned it all up and made it look nice and pretty. And then we hit it with a coat of primer. Now Don had an idea that he thought would be really cool is if the background of the machine was a dark blue color. And then the stencils were white and red. So normally on the machine, it's a, the background is white with blue and red stencil. So I thought, yeah, that, that would look pretty cool. We got the blue paint and we painted the cabinet and, uh, we're like, wow, this is kind of pale. This isn't sort of a dark Navy color that we were thinking of. <laughs> well, it'll, it'll darken when it, uh, when it dries. Well, when it dried, it didn't. So we had to actually go and get a different color paint and repaint the cabinet body again. And we, we didn't have a whole lot of time to work on this. We didn't have like months before this, this competition happened. It was, if I remember, it was about a week. So this first layer of paint was sort of an aw crap moment for us. <laughs> All right. So we, we got the, we got the cabinet painted the correct color of blue, the head, because of the way the stencil works and everything, we actually had to paint that white first. Then we laid on the stencil and we hit the, the head with blue because we wanted the, the Harlem along the sides to be in white for the cabinet. We laid down the first stencil and then we hit that with white. When we peeled that off, we were like, oh yeah, we're in, we're going in the right direction because that white, uh, with the logo and everything really pops. So then we got the second stencil on, this is a two part stencil. We hit it with the, the red highlights and, uh, on the back box, we hit it with the red highlights. And then we were looking at it and we thought, you know, there's no reason why we can't make the, the basketball orange. I can't think of a reason. So we, we stenciled that off and we sprayed it orange. Don had some, uh, he had the side rails and the lockdown bar and the legs. He had all those, oh, and the door. He had those all, uh, powder coated in red and we were lucky that all of our reds matched because they could have been slightly off, but they, they were pretty, pretty darn close. So this is what the machine looked like when we were all finished. And then we took it to the show and it kind of hung out off to the side for the competition. And, and this picture is kind of cool because you can see an original globe trotters and then our custom paint job because, so you can decide which one you like better. And then we won some, some sort of award for this, like the best, best restoration or best custom. I don't even remember what it was. Uh, and somewhere I have a picture of us standing there with the little trophy thing, but I couldn't find it anyway. 
So right around the same time, Don had three pinbots in his shop of varying degrees of uh, functionality and condition. And his idea was he was going to try to cobble these together, uh, make one really nice pinbot, have one that's uh, in pretty good shape pinbot, and then he would have all this leftover parts pinbot. Uh, so leftover parts pinbot sat around for a little while. I bugged him long enough that he didn't want to sell it, but I bugged him long enough and he finally sold it. And he actually had a stencil for it as well. So I, w I knew that this machine was going to be a little bit of uh, work, but overall the play field was in really good shape. The mechanics actually weren't so bad. The wiring harness had a bit of a problem. Someone had snipped it at some point and then everything was all taped together. So I had to take that wiring harness and, and re redo all of that. The cabinet was in really, really rough shape. So it needed some, uh, it needed to be sanded down entirely. The paint was literally falling off of it. There were a couple of places that it was damaged, but then there were actually flaws in the wood itself. So the plywood layers, uh, the layer under the top layer, you, you know, sometimes you have the big knot holes. And so you'd have a big section missing in the plies. There was one really bad one on the head actually where it was, the wood was soft and I cut that all away and did a, a Bondo wood fill. And then this section down at the bottom, it was chipped. And then I realized that it was all empty underneath that top layer. So I chipped all that away and filled that with Bondo, got it all sanded down and cleaned up and everything. So with the idea of the, the globe trotters in mind, I thought, you know what, what if I were to make this a slightly different theme? keep the original stencil, nothing changes with the stencil design, but just change the colors around. This is a mock-up of what I did originally thinking, okay, well, I'll just do red background and just the, just change the colors. Funny thing, I actually made the same mistake that we made with Globetrotters. I went to the store, I went to like a big box store and I bought a red paint and I got it on the machine and I thought, okay, this is going to dry a lot darker and it didn't. And it was kind of orange. I didn't really like the, the color very much. It looked good on the little swatch, but once you get it painted on a large surface, you kind of get a better idea what the color looks like. So I went down to the paint store and talked to them and said, I just, I really, I want a red, like a, a toolbox red or a, a fire extinguisher red, something that really is like deep and rich color. And the only thing that they had was this marine paint, an oil-based marine paint. And it was super stinky stuff. I didn't like working with it at all, but it did the job. So I, I sanded down the cabinet and I hit it with this marine paint and it looked gorgeous. I really liked the way that I liked the color a lot. There was another benefit I thought of the marine paint being the base coat is that it's when it dries, it's going to be a super tough paint. So it actually might be a really good option for, for repainting pinball machines. I, th I think it's going to wear better than uh, some other latex type paint. So that was a benefit of the marine paint uh, and dealing with the stink of it all. So the red is on, it's dried. I figured I would do the follow-up colors in just using a basic spray paint. I figured I've got a good solid base coat on, the spray paint should be fine. I wasn't sure if the spray paint was going to stick to the Marine. So I did a little sample test, let it dry with, let the red dry. And then I gave it a light sand and then I hit it with some black paint and it adhered just fine. There were no reactions or anything. So I got my, my first stencil on and I laid down my black stencil color. And I, th I thought that looked great. Once I got it all peeled off, it looked really cool. And I thought, okay, I'm, I'm in the right direction. So then the next stencil color, I, I was originally going to do yellow, but then I got to thinking, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm this far. I might as well have more fun with it. <laughs> so Pinbot has on his visor and his chest plate, he's got all the different colors. Uh, you know, there's the yellows and the blues and the greens and whatever. And I thought, you know what? I can do that on the side panels. That's great. And then the, for the back box, we have the planets with all the different stencil parts of it. So I can, highlight those with all the different colors too. So I came up with a plan on how that was going to work out. When you're working with stencils, you have to be really careful, especially when they're multi-layer stencils, you have to be really careful that your registration marks line up. This particular stencil set, if I remember, 
they had registration marks for the front and the back and then where the corners were. So you lay down your first one, you make sure that those marks are where they are on the cabinet. The second layer, the registration marks are in the same place, but you have to be really careful that they line up and you can't get the stencil halfway on and they go, oh, we're wrong and then peel it off. You'd screw it all up. So you have to take some extra care when you're doing stencil work just to make sure that everything's going to line up well. So I got my second layer on and you can see in these pictures, I got this registration like dead to rights. It's like almost perfect. I've managed to do that on both sides of it. I think one of the back box ones, I was a little off somewhere, but it, it was fine. One of the things we learned about doing the Globetrotter machine is dealing with the stencil itself. So not only is the registration uh, an important factor, but you have this stencil you have to work with. So the stencil itself is a, is a cut vinyl sheet. One side of the vinyl has sort of a low tack adhesive on it, and it's covered by sort of this plasticky paper. The other side of the stencil is covered with an, another sort of plasticky paper bit. So we found that if you peel a little bit back on one edge, you get your registration mark lined up and then get that stuck to the cabinet and then slowly peel back on the tack side. You peel back that covering as you're putting it on. You don't want to peel that covering all off at once and then try to stick it. It'll never work. It'll be a big mess. You'll get all these bubbles and blisters and everything. This way, if you kind of inch your way along as you're peeling the back off and you're adhering the stencil, you can get rid of air bubbles. You can make sure that alignment is staying true. And that, that seemed to be easier to work with. For removing the paper on the other side, once you get the whole stencil on, we actually found if you try to peel that whole paper backing off in one go, there's so much uh, tension and force on the on the vinyl and the low tack doesn't have the adhesiveness to stick, you're going to actually start pulling up part of your stencil. So we found if you just rip off a little corner and remove those in strips, so three or four strips, it's much easier to get off and you're not damaging your stencil and you're not pulling your stencil off. That seemed to work really, really well. So I was doing all these extra colors and I decided I should probably test all of those colors first. I painted a post that was on my workbench. I painted it with the red. I gave it a light sand and then masked off a bunch of different areas and then tested a bunch of different colors of paint just to make sure I wasn't going to get a reaction. Whenever you're working with different brands of paint um, and different types of paint, you want to do this just to make sure that you're not going to get reactions because it'll screw you all up. And as you can see on this shot, it's a good thing that I did it because <laughs> these two yellows reacted really poorly with that red paint. They got all wrinkly and crinkly and uh, that would have been a real big mess, but I did find a yellow that worked with it. So that was, that was good. So I've got all my colors ready to go and I masked off different areas of the machine just so that I could hit them with the individual colors. And I gave them two or three coats. I don't remember which just enough to, you know, cover the thing. And here's a shot of, there's still some masking in place, but here's a shot where I've got a lot of the color already laid down. So now it's time to do the silver of Pinbot. I got to thinking that the silver would be cool, but Pinbot actually has a, a red arm and a blue arm. And how do I translate that onto this image? And I thought, well, what if I put the silver down and then I take a blue and I do sort of a shadowing effect of just the blue, just to highlight the color. So it would look like the arm was sort of this metallic blue color and where the, where the shadows were, the blue kind of stands out a little bit more. So I thought that might work, you know, <laughs> might as well try it. And worst case it, when the stencil is still on it and I decide it's not going to work, I can always hit it with silver and cover it up. So I did that with both the red and the blue side, and I thought, you know, I think this is going to work. So I went with it. The next part is probably the most fun of all of this. You've got all your paint down, your stencils are still down, but you get to kind of peel it off and do the big reveal and see if, if what you did worked. <laughs> 
is the most seriously the most satisfying part of all of this. So you you sort of start peeling it back and and uh, so here we are uh, taking the stencil off and getting a a look at what it actually looks like. So you'll notice on uh, if you look really close, you can see a little bit of the silver that the paint's a little thick, and I have little edges there from the stencils. So I just went over that really, really carefully with some really, really high grit sandpaper, like a 3000 or something, just to smooth those edges down. And then once I got that done, I went through and um, checked to see if there was any parts that needed to be kind of touched up a little bit. So if I got a little bleed through, I was able to remove that with just a little razor blade and just kind of scraped it off. And if there was a part that needed a little touch up, like a little black part or something, then I went ahead and, and hit it with uh, just some extra paint. Like I sprayed this spray paint into the into a cup and then just use a brush and just touched it in places where I needed it. So remember earlier that I had sanded all of my red to make sure that my my spray paint colors would stick to it. So we have to fix that. So my original thought was I would go ahead and, and get all the stencil parts down and then I would give it a coat of clear on top of it. That would help protect all of it. It would protect the, the spray paint colors and give it a uniform finish across the whole thing. I hit all of my stencil colors with a really light sanding of about a 3000 grit sandpaper. Really, really careful not to cut through any of the colors. Uh, just roughed it up a little bit. And then I tested a couple of different clears. I found that the the Krylon Triple Thick, the same stuff that you use on pinball back glasses to adhere the, the paint to the to the glass if it's flaking off. I found that that worked really well. That's great. But I didn't want like super shiny. So I found it in a mat. I tried that. And I really liked the way that that, that looked at the end of the day. It brought the richness of the colors out. It gave it a nice finish, but it wasn't glossy and it wasn't going to have fingerprints all over it. it. It didn't, fingerprints didn't seem to stick to it. That's, that's what I went with. Overall, I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. I like it. I, li I like that it's got its own character and uniqueness to it. I could have gone with the original colors, but you know, I already had the stencils. I got this, you know, why not? Why not have a little bit of fun with it? I probably wouldn't do this on a machine where they only made a handful of them. So I have a solar fire that needs to be uh, all gone through and worked out. The paint on that cabinet is pretty rough. So it needs to be done, but I'm going to do that in the traditional colors just because it's such a, a rare machine, but with something like a pinbot where there's, there's tons and tons of them out there, you know, I, I think have at it, have fun with it and, and make it unique and make it your own. Um, if someone doesn't like it down the line, they can always sand it off and repaint it, right? You're not going to ruin it. So that's my custom pinbot paint job. Um, and the, the custom Globetrotter one that we did is kind of cool. I don't, I don't remember who ended up getting that machine. Um, I, I believe that it was, if I recall, it was a women's competition. And so there's a woman in uh, probably somewhere in the Washington state area that has it. If, if you have it, uh, leave, a, leave a comment and uh, say hi. So that's, that's the end of the video. Like I mentioned in my previous video, we have some things a lot of pokers in the fire. So, uh, I usually don't ask people to like, and subscribe and do all of that other business. But, um, if, if you're interested in finding out about the future of Canada's largest pinball arcade, then definitely you, you're going to want to like, and subscribe and do that little notification dealy Bob, um, and get the news as it comes out because we're going to document all of it. Uh, we've already started. So, <laughs> but I don't want to say too much because, uh, just in case we, everything isn't in stone. And if it isn't, then, uh, I, I don't want to have a whole bunch of videos out of stuff that didn't actually end up happening. So anyway, and then, uh, yeah, if you, if you use all of the other social media platforms, uh, there are links in the description of my Instagrams and my Facebooks type of things and you can hop on over there and do whatever it is you do on those platforms. Um, I don't really use them, but I figured we probably should have them right. Cause social media is the thing now, but I'm, I'm kind of paying attention. If you comment, I'll comment and, and do all that. I'm doing it begrudgingly. <laughs> all right. So that's uh that's my podcast video. Um, anyway. Okay. Bye.